G'day trendsetters. Welcome to episode 10 of the BNSF Birdwood Sub. Yes, double figures. Now, why am I taking a photo on the trailer? Well, this sheet of ply is the very first sheet of ply for the Helix, which will be starting this weekend. So it'll be shot over quite a few days. So we'll be coming back at regular intervals and uh, showing you how it's going, explaining how we're going to do it. So let's get into the shed and start the Helix. Now, transmitters, before we do any cutting, we need to have a bit of a tool. So uh, come in a bit closer and we need to have a talk on Greg's little magic rug here. So you come and have a sit and we'll talk about helixes. Now, are we all paying attention? Especially you up the back? Johnny, I won't tell you again. Now, before you cut a single thing with your gigolo saw, you have to work out what grade you want on your helix. Because that determines the whole ball game, basically. So, once you've determined your gradient, which in my case I want a little bit under 2%, uh, since I've discovered that 2% is, is limiting uh, the low coast down to about two cars per driven axle, I want a little bit more than that, so I've eased my grades off a little bit to about 1.8 and it really does make a big difference. Anyway, about 1.9%. Now, the second thing you need to figure out is what spacing you need or would like on your helix. So every time it goes around, between your levels, what's your minimum spacing that you want? In my case, double stack. So it works out to about 90 mil uh, between boards, between the top of the lower one and the bottom of the top one. And the decking's about a 19 mil, so I need to go up about 110 uh, a layer. So you've got those two. Then you need to work out what diameter you want. Now the bigger the diameter, the more flexibility you have because you can get more uh, track per diameter, uh, length of track per diameter, what I'm trying to say, and more lift. Now, uh, this is where you have to sort of start doing some maths trendsetters. And so I worked out that I was going to go two metre diameter, but that was a bit too big, so I brought it back to uh, 1800. I would have liked to go on 1900, but uh, you'll see when we get up in the shed, it would have been a little bit tight. So we've gone uh, 1800, so it's a 900 millimeter radius. Now at a 900 millimeter radius at, a one, at about 2% or just under 2% gives me a, uh, I think it's 5.6 meters, which is about 11 point something centimeters or 110 centimeters per revolution. So you take out your 20 mil for your uh, width of your board and then that gets me down to about 93 to 94 mil spacing. I should have transcends between the top of the lower decking and the bottom of the top decking. So before you cut anything you have to work out all those things and then your helix will be beautiful. So we've done that and uh, let's see if I get my 93 or 94 mil. Yeah we'll see how we go. So let's get so now we can go and do something. So Go and play. Now, as I said earlier, uh, if you're building a helix like this one using the block principle or block method, your first la layer of the helix is crucial. If you get that right, then it's just a matter of cutting all your blocks the right, the same length, and your helix goes up automatically. So you can see here we're we're out a little bit. So I've uh, I've just got to screw that down onto my upright. I've had to put a little shim underneath it. And that's pretty well spot on there. I'm trying to keep this slightly under two percent so that's probably even better there probably a little bit too much though so i might go for a slightly thinner shim that's the uh bit of cardboard i got there so i'll go for one in the middle and that'll get it right so i'm trying to keep this slightly under two percent but uh the first this first layer is a crucial transverse Okay, I've cut another shim here. This one's a little bit thinner. Just a little bit of cardboard there. We'll whack him in. Whack him, whack him. Now, I, had, I did have this upright cut pretty well perfect, but I, um, I forgot to cut the chamfer on it. 
because you know if you cut them square, remember we said if you cut them square, if this was right angle, and when you try and put this down on like that, this is on a slope, and your upright is, uh, is not. So you always cut the top of your uprights, I know it's a little bit more mucking around, but it makes your grades a lot easier. Um, about one or two degrees equals about 2%, as long as you put a bit of a chamfer on it. Right, we're two days into it, and uh, we've cut some timber, and we've got the first level down. Now that's the most important because that's the one that the rest of the helix will be uh, taken off I suppose or built from uh, because I'm not using the threaded rod method I'm using the block method so I'll just show you the difference between those two and uh, horses for courses I think the threaded rods probably better if you're building a huge helix uh, but a smaller helix I think maybe the block the block method? I don't know, whatever. Whatever floats your boat, man. Now with the, the block method, obviously, uh, you know, it's our first level here. This is the one we need to get spot on, because everyone after that is just put on these blocks here and you just put a block every, I'll be putting one every 500, and then the next lay, the layer sits on top of that. Um, so once you get this bottom level, the first level perfect, whatever grade you want, then if you cut all these the same size of your distance between your top and your bottom, you obviously worked that out with our mathematics, didn't we? Trendsetters, yes we did. And you can cut like just a whole bunch of these and just go dot 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 dot. And as you, as you lay the track, you just put it around. There's a guy on YouTube who does this. I can't remember his name, but if you Google Helix, like building Helix or something, you'll see it. And that's what he does. Or you use the threaded rod, you know, the big long booker rod up. And the good thing about the booker rod is you can adjust these as you go, uh, but that would probably drive me a bit crazy because I'd be forever adjusting it. So I, I figure with this way you do the, the bottom one perfect. We spent, uh, I spent a day on this yesterday doing the, the bottom level all day. And it's spot on, it's about 1.9%, 1.85, 1.9% the whole way around. And now what did I say? I said I needed 93 mil. That worked out at 2%. I got 90 mil at 1.8%, so I'm pretty happy with that. We can go over this gap over here. Let's get Simon again. Come on, Simon. If we go over that gap over there. Over there. That's exactly 90 mil, which is, uh, which is one of these. So there you go. So but I think if you're doing a bigger helix, I think the Booker Rod's probably the way to go. But, uh, so I've got the mate coming out from work helping me today, so we're going to get, we're going to cut a whole lot of these and um, cut the rest of the uh, ply out. I've already got another a loop cut out and we'll show you how that goes together. And we're going to put it all together first without track and then just uh, disassemble it and lay the track as we go obviously because you can't get in there with a little hammer trim Now we've got our base level done perfect here, that's exactly about 1.8% all the way around, which is good. So now all you have to do is cut your blocks here, uh, the same width as what it works out to down there, in our case, uh, about right on 90 mil. And you don't need to measure anything else, as long as all these blocks here are the same. Uh, you can just keep going and you'll get the same grade as this, you just marry it up every time. So you can put, as long as these blocks are cut the same. Now, uh, a lot of the people that I've seen do helixes, they get a block and put them in, this one's obviously not the right length, but just screw them in there like that, and uh, that's not a bad way to go, but I decided to uh, put the screws on the outside and um, make up like a, where are we, where's one I can show you, trendsetters, excuse me, one of these, so Alani Poo did this, while I was cutting out, he made these, it's just two bits of uh, 10 mil pine, and uh, sandwiched together, nailed and glued together, and that acts like a, um, a chop, where are we? Where's one we can put in there? There we go. So that way that gives us the height and also we can screw in from the outside. So it's a little bit more work, but uh, I, don't, I don't mind doing it that way. Let's put him back over there. And uh, these have to be, uh, they'll be staggered like this. But of course this knee all needs to be uh, taken apart with the track load. So, We'll give you a look around it, and it's done. That took, uh, well, about two and a half days. And uh, we spent a lot of time on it yesterday.
but it's uh, it's perfect. Oh, and hang on a minute. Let me just get a tape measure at Trendsetters. Now, what did I say my measurements worked out to? About 92 mil, uh, no, 93 at 2%. So we've gone to 1.8%, I reckon it's about 90 mil. So let's have a look here. 90 and a half Trendsetters. 90 and a half, what about this one? 90, that's not bad for one eyed bloke, I tell you. And that's like that all the way around. Now if we look at our level here, you probably can't see it, but that, that bubble is just to the lower end of the, uh, the line here, the two lines, and that's about 1.8%. So even our levels are right. <laughs> Let's go, my, uh, my very first helix. So I think uh, it's turned out pretty well. Just needs to be pulled apart now. Yeah, shot from here, transitors. In our chopper. That was stupid. <laughs> so there we go. There's access in the middle there, two points in the middle. And then, trust me, I was in there all day yesterday, sweating my ring out. So is Wayne, he was sweating too. Now that there is our branch off track, that actually has to be straightened where the two tracks uh, come off the top of the helix there. But uh, that can be done when we rebuild it with track. Now Trent, so if your track needs to go over another uh, road bed, and of course with the helix it has quite a bit of weight in it, so it needs to be supported. So down here, this lower track here with that little bit of uh, foam underlay on it there, is actually is a uh, big reversing loop and the top of the helix goes right over, or should I say the bottom track of the helix goes right over it. So we needed to support it. So you'd make like a little uh, or girder or whatever you want to call it there and just cut a hole in it and make sure you have enough in the top to support the weight, probably about 30 mil you probably want, don't want any less than that with this bit here. Here, that's, uh, that's about 30 mil. And now I've just got a spacer on top here to get the spacing correct. But, so this is, uh, let's say our inch ply, it's gusseted down here, it's all strong. So all this here takes the weight of the helix, this uh, lower helix track here, and uh, our double stacks can go under here. So we couldn't put a pile on here, obviously, and I needed one here. So uh, you can't lever it sort of thing over like that. I've done that on a couple of parts on the layout. It works really well. And that is strong is bro. We're going to train up underneath the helix. Uh, Wayne Poo is at the controls. Oh, there it is. Up to not seven there, Wayne. Oh, 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 oh. Mm. Actually, this would be a test because this is the first run I've done with those Trinity hoppers with the new axle sets in them, so we'll see. Whether you've got enough grunt to get over this hill. I started at 35, I just started at 35 there. Yeah. started at 30 down the bottom. Yep. We'll soon see if you're going to stall out, you'll do it around here somewhere. So we replace the uh, Walters axle sets with Intermountain. You get rid of those plastic axles, which uh, Walters reckon they're actually metal axles, but they're not. And those Trinity 4 bay hoppers are damn heavy anyway. So I reckon they're worth probably 
two or at least three cars each with their standard axles in them and now they're, they're pretty darn good, they roll really well now. I think you're going to do it Wayne. The two GEs working hard there, trendsetters. Going up underneath the helix which we finished today, or finished the timber work today. Oh, now we have to back off to about 25 or 24 to go through that crossover up there, mate. Sorry, I should have told you that. No speed boards up, so my fault. You're bad. My bad. Oh, pop up, you can weed. Weed. You have to be about 45 to even know what that means, anyway. Well, I think that'll do us for helixes on part one. Uh, you got the gist, you know how to cut the uh, play out, you know how to do all your measurements, you have to make sure you get your grade, what you want, which will determine your diameter, which is determined by how much gap you want in here. And if you're using the block method like this, make sure your first level is spot on, and then if you cut all these blocks the same size, you won't have to do another measurement until you get to the top, even when you get to the top. Also very important to make sure your curves are the same, I use a template. Um, Otherwise, you don't want the, these things going in and out, you know. These do a little bit, unless you cut it like on a, uh, a laser cutter that's super accurate, you're going to be a couple of mil out, but this is pretty good. Uh, the, using the uh, threaded rod will give you a little bit more leeway. You don't need to be as accurate because you can just bore a hole through. Uh, the trouble with the threaded rod helix is that you can't support them from the bottom, really. They have to be hung from the top. Uh, in my opinion anyway. So I think the smaller helix is use the blocks, a bigger one, maybe use the threaded rod, but it's, it's you know, it's up to you. I will it, but this is my first helix. So what the hell do I know, trendsetters? But uh, for a first job, I think it's pretty good. So uh, I'm just waiting for some road bed to come in and some um, spikes, and the next few weeks we'll be getting into this, and uh, we'll show you episode two, or should I say uh, B, of uh, building our helix, so it's all very exciting. So thanks for watching, and um, we'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye. Oh, shock up, little wee.